got a first look at a brand new floor plane here for you from Delta, where they took the same old thing and did it a little bit differently. And why did my voice jump two octaves? I don't know. So, uh, vocal gymnastics aside, welcome everybody. Josh the RV Nerd with Bish's RV down here at Alliance today. I, uh, I took a trip away from the office to get you my first look here at the new 252 RL. And um, I, I, I like what they did here. I like how it's not exactly the same, same as everything else. And I feel like the longer Delta's been around, the more that they're really kind of finding their stride here. So if you really look at this, it's kind of similar to like a 2500 Imagine. It's kind of similar to like a 25 RDS Cougar, if you're familiar with those and some other things. But what I like here, is they didn't just do the same old thing. So first of all, just in terms of the layout, instead of going with a giant rear Megadinette, which is cool, and maybe you like that, they went with a very functional, time-tested and proven four-person, two-bench dinette with storage below it. You can fold down into a sleeper, it gets the job done, son. But by doing that, they were able to take the pantry out of the slide out and extend the sofa. And I think most people are probably going to spend more time on the sofa than the dinette, especially in a couple's model. And that kind of makes sense to me. So now we have that big, like three seat, triple recliner, adult size sofa, where if you want to, you can just lay down and take a nap on that sucker. Now combine that with the fact that, you know, they're ventless uh, and carpetless in the floor and the slide. So it's very easy cleaning and pet friendly. And then combine that with the fact that we've got the extra tall ceilings. The whole thing just looks and feels very large and wide open. Open. I also really like how Delta is one of, basically one of the only factory standard travel trailers out there with dual air conditioner standard and you can run both air conditioners on 30 amp service. That is an exceptionally uncommon find right there. So what's really cool about this is it gives you uh, potentially half ton towability around 30 feet, but you're getting big fifth wheel features in a really cozy couples camper right here alliteration aside i like what i see let me know what you think and in the meantime what you don't realize is the rest of my team just showed up i had no idea i was beating them today now real quick i want to mention this is like the first prototype of this model there's probably a few things that are going to change and some things that they may change based on your input in fact the way that they executed this floor plane was literally based on consumer input and not just how they thought they should build it check this out so a lot of builders make this floor plan either with a rear sofa and a dinette in the slide, which means no one really has a, a good angle on the entertainment center, or they'll build it with like an eight foot wide mega dinette on the rear wall, which looks very cool. It folds down to a large sleeper. There's storage below it. I get it. It's neat. It provides lots of windows, but it puts pressure on floor plans in other ways. And you might notice here, they did something almost classic camping. They maintained a gigantic pantry uh, right by the door that uh, has removable shelves, as you're going to see, but also still stuck with just a traditional two-bench dinette. And what's funny is, frankly, this thing tends to fit four adults better than most, although I'm not changing my normal stance in that. I'm not a big fan of the knee knocker pedestal legs. I would, I would keep the tabletop, and the first thing I'd do is spend 40 bucks on Amazon to get myself a set of folding legs, and I would have a floating table that if I wanted, I could pull in front of the sofa and use it for like Dinofa time, staring straight across from the entertainment center. Now, this again is one of the areas where it's a little prototypey. And uh, their original design in this, they looked at it and said, you know, we're six foot nine tall instead of six and a half like a lot of brands. Um, our TV sits pretty high in the sky. So their very first version of this that they put together, it actually did have a drop-down TV mechanism, which would have blocked that window a little bit, but it would have really kind of saved your neck a little bit for, for viewing. The problem is they looked at their service records on that style of drop-down TV mount and found that it was prone to falling down in transit. And I, I appreciate the fact that they cared not just how it looked and how it would sell, but how it would actually perform in real world use. So they took that drop down TV mechanism out and they're exploring some other options. I think they're on the right track myself personally. I'd be curious about your thoughts, feedback and input um, on that. The other thing that they mentioned, oh, I just noticed there's some power outlets under that overhead cabinet, by the way. Um, what One thing they're going to do is they're going to actually recess the whole TV cabinet back a little bit. So it's either flush or maybe even behind the microwave area here a little bit. So it's not quite so bulky 
and uh, in your face, and, and it might hope, uh, open up the space here. Now, when the first couple Deltas came out, under the countertop over there, they did not have the electric space heating fireplace. Instead, what they had was just storage, which, I mean, I don't know that storage is ever the wrong answer, but they wanted to come out with an alternative here. So if you wanted storage, okay, they've got that in their 262 couples model. If you want the fireplace, they have it here in their 252 couples model. They're both a real similar size and space. I, I don't know. What do you think about it? I, I think that no matter what they do, someone's going to say that they're wrong. <laughs> But I, I think overall, this wasn't necessarily uh, terrible by any means. One other little bit of feedback I had is above the dinette here. Now, it doesn't show as much this way on camera as it does in person. It's a little dim in this space. And I was like, you know, an extra light under that wouldn't offend me. I'm, if you watch my videos, you know, I'm a little persnickety about that. I don't like dark spaces in RVs. Now, the, the, both of the entry doors have a full viewing window in them. Neither come factory standard with a privacy shade. Now, that's a very easy thing to apply to an RV. But at least in the bedroom, it feels like not having a privacy shade. It does feel a little bit like a mist to me. Um, this is another thing that was based on your... Oh, I, I'm sorry. I, I mentioned based on your feedback. The way that they came up with that dinette and pantry combo, they had four versions of this floor plan drafted out. And in the Alliance Facebook group, they published all four of them and basically said, vote. Which one do you like best? Vote for it. And this was the version that people said they would rather see. And the every floor plan, anytime you do something, if you add to one area, you take away from another, uh, you know. But what they did here is by taking the pantry out of the slide, they were able to expand the sofa seating. So instead of just a, uh, a conventional, like, normal plain Jane hide bed or... Um, two-seat theater seat like pretty much every other RV in the entire world has, they were able to come up with this bigger seating configuration, which um, personally, I rather like because I think it allows you to come up with a, uh, a number of different opportunities. So staging my camera up here and showcasing this for you, you can see how it actually does have like all three sections reclined. Now that middle armrest section does not fold down so it's not a population controller it's very very color compliant but again if you want to stretch out on it and nap you can i'm a little over six foot myself and i obviously didn't want to put my shoes on the furniture there so i had my legs hanging off but to give you a size demo overall i thought it fit pretty nicely and this does have blackout roller shades uh all the way around of course that dinette can fold down into a sleeper the overhead cabinets in this, they didn't waste the space, but they also didn't put struts on them, which isn't my favorite thing. And I hope you appreciate how I'll go out of my way to kind of showcase sometimes where RVs don't always do the very best thing possible. And I have heard that that gigantic pantry door is actually going to open the other direction uh, once this thing actually hits production. But one of the things I noticed is you have a choice. All of those shelves are removable, and they do have a set of power outlets inside of that cabinet. And what's kind of cool about that is like if you have things like appliances or a stick vac or a boot dryer or whatever, it gives you a neat little appliance closet that is sometimes kind of a hard thing to find in a lot of RVs, you know? Um, the, the fact that they not only just allow for the space for a wastebasket, but build a wastebasket in under the sink is another thing that I personally look for because there's a lot of RVs. Some, some are way bigger than this and, and have far more space and opportunities still don't give you a place to put your garbage. You know, it's just... It's kind of kind of silly to me. Now, the uh, refrigerator is a 10-plus uh, cubic foot 12-volt DC compressor fridge. And notice how they mounted it forward in the slide so you wouldn't have to cold cock yourself banging against that overhead slide fascia every time you want to get in and out of it. And that meant that there was some empty space behind it. So, they did something with it. So, when you're sitting here uh, at your theater seat, you know you got a couple elephant enema pockets. And I call them that because... You have to reach up their armpit deep to get at anything, but hey, you know what? A couple wicker baskets from Target or whatever probably fix that right up right there. Now, with their taller ceiling, they were able to put in a taller slide, and something else I think is awesome about these. I almost said really cool, but that sounds like a pun. Um, double air conditioner, factory standard. Now, these are 50-amp travel trailers, but what's really interesting about these is they are factory standard with the ability to run dual air conditioners on only 30 amp service. 
Uh, now, if you're on 30 amp service and you're running both airs and you want to fire up the microwave or a blow dryer or a toaster oven uh, or the fireplace, or did I say fireplace, microwave, something like that. Anyway, you get the another high voltage appliance, you're going to have to turn one of the air conditioners off. It doesn't have a power shed management system. Um, you, you'll have to kind of manually manage that. But the fact is, I've been to some campsites where um, our 50 amp RV, uh, the there were 30 amp people plugged into 50 amp sites, so we couldn't run. Uh, everything like we wanted to and this man uh, yeah okay so I had to turn the second air conditioner off to run a, a toaster real quick or my wife's blow dryer I can deal with that for the five ten minutes I need to turn it off and then turn the second air back on because a couple of us were sweating to the oldies all night did not sleep well would not have been a problem in here I like the big pots and pans drawer I love the toe kick uh, below the kitchen counter stuff so you can actually belly right up to the bar and that'll keep you from getting like a sore lower back you know also i don't know if you noticed but the sink is not center drained like most farm sinks because they had that um waste basket built into it they had to go with a side draining sink and the more that i got looking at that in a farm sink the more it made sense to me because if you're going to wash and dry dishes you can actually get like a big piece of Tupperware or something right here and use that like your wash basin and then rinse over here. Not to mention it provides a little bit steeper, better water runoff kind of thing in there. I'm kind of a fan of that layout. I, I, I don't see that very often. I, I rather like it myself. And I like how in the main kitchen area, the power outlets are pretty darn easy to reach. Now, in case you're curious, these are not uh, glass inserts in the traditional sense. It's actually... You can hear it sounds like plastic. It's actually a black plexiglass. And what I like is how, you know, you, you can't see inside it. A lot of glass inserts on cabinets, it looks like dirty clutter inside the cabinets. And you don't have that problem here. So that's something I really liked about these. Now, if you noticed, when I pulled out this little lower mini pantry, this is another one of those areas where they're, they're kind of looking for feedback and this is in the prototype phase. So we need your input here. So if there's one thing I've learned doing these videos and seeing all the comments that come in on this channel, it's that no matter what a manufacturer does, someone says it's wrong. So they know that they can't do everything for everybody, but they're trying to figure out what is the rightest and least wrongest way to do this. Um, and they, they have a couple ideas. So one of the ideas that they were kind of flirting with is a pseudo desk function. And if you pull this out, this is mounted at like keyboard tray height, but with the with it still kind of being a, a slide open pantry drawer, it's not, I don't know if it's super risk friendly. Now I left the bowls in here so you can see there's actually still some decent clearance inside this thing and it does leave some storage down below. Should they leave it exactly how it is? Should they get rid of it totally? Or should they just drop the slide open drawer down here and not try to pretend it's like a little bit of a desk function. Like, what is the best way in your view for them to do this? Because kind of like the way that they did the dining and the pantry in the back, frankly, it's going to be majority rules. This continues to be a consumer-driven company over here at Alliance. And while you're commenting on that, here's another very interesting thing on Alliance. They're one of the only significant major volume independent RV companies. Like you hear a lot of things out there and it seems like everything is a subsidiary of Thor, um, Forest River or Winnebago. I call it Forest River overall. But Alliance is just Alliance. They're an independent builder. They're not um, beholden to anyone else. They do what consumers want. It also gives them a little bit more flexibility in terms of some service things. And I personally feel the after-sales support from Alliance is about the best in the industry out there today. Now, if you take note here, there's just fantastic space around this toilet. And you saw that there was actually pretty decent storage in this bathroom. One of the things I really like here, though, is that is a soft-close uh, lid. So it's not going to go clack real hard here. Now, if you wake up in the morning and somebody doesn't close this sliding privacy door over here, you could absolutely have a morning bathroom staring contest, but I don't think that's anyone's idea for fun. And the idea behind a walkthrough middle bathroom is it allows the RV to stay a little bit shorter while actually still giving you a bigger bathroom. But it does mean that if someone's using this bathroom and you're up here or back there and want to go through, you, you basically have to go outside because it does cut the camper off. It also does benefit the travel access of this RV, and this bathroom is the reason it has... Well, actually, no, I'm sorry. I got ahead of myself. This still has a two-stage travel access kind of living room, doesn't it? I didn't think about that. 
Um, anyway, you get the idea. There's benefits, there's drawbacks. Jay Feather, I think, has a somewhat similar... Somebody has a similar version of this with a walk-around bathroom. I, got, I, I can't remember who. Now, being six foot nine tall, they had more room in that shower for taller individuals like myself, and that is one of those uh, more rectangular variety showers versus the uh, the radius. The radius showers I can use just fine. Like somebody asked me the other day, like, why are you so down on radius showers? I I'm not. I I'm just trying to share the positives and the negatives. Like the headroom in them is fine. Um, some folks find the elbow room in them though a little bit lacking. Just the little details too, like a place to put your your hand pump for your soap and and your toothbrushes. Stuff like that in RVs, those spaces add up quickly. And I like how they give us those options. Now, it is the uh, dollar store four-inch fart fan variety up here. But again, those are not hard to upgrade. But the fact is, the factory does not give you the bigger uh, vent. They do, however, again, include the second air conditioner standard, which is just shockingly uncommon out there. They do not offer a king bed. So let me ask you, like, this is a 60 by 80 residential true queen. Is this good? Is this what they should stick with? Should they allow or offer options for something like a, a, a six inch wider Olympic queen or like an RV king bed? And I say RV king bed, I gotta start doing a better job of that because a 70 or 72 by 80 bed isn't necessarily, I think, what a lot of people think of when they hear king bed. Now up top there, it's kind of a weird location for it. Your TV hookups are over on the side. And some folks, I've seen some comments like, why didn't they just put the TV hookups across from the bed? Because over here across from the bed is either an open door or a sliding privacy uh, door. Although there is kind of a little bit of a partition over there that may work. But I don't think they wanted the door to hit the television if I had to guess. It's just a theory. I can't say for sure. Now there's a lot of brands that tout no floor vents. And then you get up into the bedroom and there's floor vents. And you can see they don't have that here whatsoever. They stayed very consistent. I also really like how um, you've got household and USB outlets on both sides of the bed with these nice little side stands right here. Um, the uh, other thing here is Alliance does some very interesting, um, what do I want to say? Uh, uh, just some construction things that you don't find on a lot of other towables. So while we're looking here at the bedroom storage, let me tap in on that. First of all, they are um, all color-coded wiring, which is very cool. Very few towable RV manufacturers are color-coding their wiring. And it, it, it's, it's surprising. Alliance is not the first, but it's crazy that uh, more brands aren't doing, I think, Keystone and Winnebago are one of the very few other companies that, that color code their wiring, you know. Another thing is they have individual shutoff valves for all of their plumbing fixtures. So let's just say, while we're standing here, I don't know, that bathroom sink. Let's say that something goes wrong with the bathroom sink. There's a fitting that failed and it's leaking. You can shut the water off to only the bathroom sink. You can still use your shower, your toilet, your kitchen sink over here, you don't cripple the entire RV. You can turn individual water fixtures and features on and off as needed. And I, I think that's a uh, that's one of those things that instead of losing your entire trip, you can still get through, you can, you can make do, and then you know deal with something, fix it once you get back home. But for those that care, it does have what I call two-stage travel access. Now the refrigerator, it does come pretty close to the kitchen countertop, but I feel that's still sufficient enough to be able to get to and use that fridge in transit. That's just my two cents though. But like our sink, all of our drawers, if you remember where they're located, they're readily accessible. And due to the fact that your dining is not located in the slide, there's no worry about being able to use it while the slide's retracted. If you're not familiar, like I, that's not something historically I talked about a lot. If you notice, this thing is levitating like David Blaine over here. The inside edge of that slide out is not supported. That slide is not designed to be used unless it's fully extended. Now that's very true in the towable industry. It's obviously not real common in the uh, motorized industry. Now again, we do have what I call two-stage travel access here. So uh, the, 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 the door that we just came from, that's going to be for your snack-tastic access. This one up here is gonna be if you need to take a nap or take a crap, as it were, as uh, you know, using my, my very flowery language. Um, giving a look at the power awning, as long as it's open here, I got a question for you. Um, oh, I didn't showcase this, I'm sorry. I, I got ahead of myself, let me zip back up in here. They recently added this. Now, the, the camera is probably going to flicker because of the lighting. So if you're light sensitive, you might want to look away. I'll give you about two seconds here. They have dimmer lighting now 
um, in the, uh, the the living cabinet of these. It didn't flicker as much as I thought it was going to. That's actually kind of nice. The new camera's handling that better. But if you just want to dim that down a little bit, it's nice that you can really kind of put a more calm atmosphere inside your RV. Would you like it if the awning lights also dimmed? I'm kind of I'm kind of curious. Is there anybody who I don't know wouldn't be interested in something like that? Now, this being brand new, like I don't always have an opportunity to double check the weights and measures and specs before I get these videos going, but using the tags off the side of the RV and kind of eyeballing it here, it looks to me like it's right around that 30 foot range and 8,250 pounds maximum GVW. That doesn't seem uh, necessarily out of question for late model tow package half ton towability. Now, whether it is or is not half ton towable will really depend on your specific truck in question and where are you going to take it? People will say, can my half ton handle this? Well, I don't know. Are you going to be flat landing? Are you going to be going uh, up and down mountain ranges? Are you going to go through windy plains and zones? Because that stuff all makes a difference, you know? There's a lot of different factors that go into it. They've got the uh, Guantanamo Bay face hood over the uh, power tongue jack right here. And that's one of those like <clears throat> very low dollar things that can really help keep the, uh, the buttons and things from getting fouled out from the weather uh, over time. Now, <clears throat> sorry, my throat's really kind of froggy here all of a sudden. The, uh, we're going to get in that big pass through in just a second, but a couple details first. You can see we're prepped and ready for some Solera slide awnings. Other slide awnings could be applied, but that's what these are kind of easy prepped for. Uh, you also see these little white tabs on the side of that uh, rack and pinion slide system. Those are there just to help make sure the wiper seals flip in and out uh, properly, because if a wiper seal gets kind of crimped, that means that the water can kind of get in and out of it, which is not what you want. Down here, we do have Goodyear Endurance radials, uh, rated for 87 miles an hour. Not that anyone should ever be towing that fast. And we have a single stink pickle depository right here. It's got a single sewer outlet. You can see how everything is all cross plumbed together here, but the gate valves and everything are enclosed up in that heated underbelly, which is nice. And you do have a stinky slinky sewer tube over here to keep your, um, you know, all your black tank stuff away from all your other fresh watery kind of stuff. You know, you don't want those things kind of intermingling and mixing. Now they have a massive front pass through on these things because again, they're trying to apply a lot of their fifth wheel features to their travel trailers here. So not only do you get this big basement, but I really like the kind of centralized docking center. Um, the, the other thing that's really neat about this is like you see, you see RVs with outside spray ports all the time, but you see how this one has that hot cold knob right there. That is the one set of controls to rule them all. So if you uh, want to use the outside spray port on the back of the RV by the ladder, it actually still is a hot, cold outside utility shower, even though it only looks like a sprayer port for cold water. Then over there on the right, those are like slide out of the way, easy access panels to things like your solar charge controller, your water pump, and some of those other kind of systemic sort of things. So sliding back here, there's a couple other interesting things about this front passenger. So over on the other side, there was one of these switches and that can open and close the slide from the outside of the RV where you can just look straight down the sidewall and line up sight it. That switch right there, that will actually uh, manipulate the outside power awning. So you can sit out here and decide to open or close the awning. Or if you're sitting out here and then the wind picks up, you can put the awning away so it doesn't, you know, go woof down the street like the neighbor's trampoline in a storm. Anybody ever see that? It's entertaining, but also like, oh, that sucks. But at the same time, you're also secretly hoping maybe it lands in my backyard and becomes my trampoline. <laughs> you're just like, no, I don't know where it came from. God gave me that trampoline. This is also another cool thing up here. The RV comes with its own picnic table. And the reason I like that is you don't have to worry about, um, well, I'm just going to say this because it does literally happen. If you're not aware, this is a thing that literally happens. People will literally sling their sewer hoses across the public picnic table. And I like to have my own picnic table with its own cover. So I don't got to worry about getting diphtheria uh, from some guy who's maybe not the most considerate, you know, that's just me, for instance, also ignoring that. I mean, there's wildlife out there. I don't know if you're aware of this, but uh, the wildlife kind of does their business wherever they please, which is one of those things that actually concerns me about the Little Mermaid, if you think about it. Like a fish swimming around in the ocean, 
She never really learned potty training, so when she suddenly became human from the waist down, I'm sure that was a, a messy situation. But hey, now that I've ruined your childhood, if I'm going to be picky, it does feel like maybe that awning could be extended forward a little bit to pass that door. But sometimes awnings come in specific sizes, so maybe it's possible, maybe it's not. I don't know. It's just a thing that would look nice. It would definitely start to require a center arm support if you did that. Uh, so there's, you know, there's always a little bit of an up, down, in between anything. Now, this is that picnic table we're talking about. I do like, it's a nice good size six foot table. So if you do have multiple people around it, everybody's really got nice elbow room and it's just long enough. You could probably make shift a little game of campsite beer pong with it, but hey, neither here nor there. Moving our way on back. Um, your uh, water heater is a tankless on demand so that, uh, you know, you want to take some back to back showers right before you leave or the night before or something like that. No one's got to deal with taking a cold shower or anything. This is also another Delta doing Delta things over here. They all come with this oversized, like mega, like griddle grill kind of wombo combo sort of thing with the gas grill cooker hooker going on right down below it. Um, if you uh, notice down here to, come on, oop, hold on. There we go, it's funny, you gotta flip the lever. You got that little guy that slides out for you there. I don't know if I've ever showed that on camera. Now as we back up, I wanna direct your attention to that ladder and notice that, like that ladder itself should come with a wide load sticker. It is a wide, wide ladder. One of the things I like about that is one, it gives you more foot space and handhold space, but two, if you want to use that thing to like hang towels or something like that, you know, like just some beach towels to dry off before you go out again later, it's really handy having that there. Um, also on the back, you do have yourself a uh, uh, accessory receiver hitch. So if you want to add like uh, bike racks or something like that, you can do her there. Now, while I'm giving you a look up top at the roof, let me kind of run through the generalized construction of this thing. So our walls and our floor, they're all aluminum structured and basically all composite. So they're, they're not really using wood product in the walls and floor of these things, uh, which is one, it helps reduce weight and two, it just makes it a, a little bit more resistant to any sort of water exposure or water penetration, which is fancy flower talk for leak. God forbid you have a leak, more of this RV, is going to be resistant to that kind of stuff. Now, our roof is obviously fully walkable. If I can get my chubby dad bot up there, I'm pretty sure you can too. And you may have noticed again, the standard dual air conditioners and 200 watt solar package. Um, the uh, underbelly, that is also enclosed, forced air heated. It does also have um, tank heaters on that. So this is something that if, uh, you know, it's gonna dip below zero tonight, uh, come back tomorrow, you're gonna be okay. So, <laughs> kind of funny, I, I didn't realize it. A bunch of the other ambitious team members from Idaho are actually out here today, and I happened to bump into them across this entire country. We both happen to be inside the same building right now. Totally unplanned. Kind of funny how life works out like that. It's like, have you ever been on vacation somewhere way away from home, and you look over, you're like, there's, there's Brenda from down the street. Like, Brenda's here. Like, how does that always work out? Sorry, anyway. Um, let me know what you think about this one. Now to help you out here, of course, I'll leave you links in the video description for pricing and availability so that Brenda from down the street can check those. Uh, but I will also um, leave you some links to things like the Imagine, like the Cougar, some similar floor plans from other builders that I've seen. And I'd be kind of curious which one you would go with and why. Take a look at a couple of those and I don't care what video it's on, drop me a comment, let me know. And until next time, take care, stay safe, have fun, and best wishes from Bishes, everyone.